that adaptation to a specific vegetarian diet means that the animal becomes entirely dependent on certain vegetable species. That is exactly what happened to the lemurs on the island of Madagascar, just 400 kilometers from the southeast coast of Africa. The lemurs are in reality ancient primates, very similar to the ancestor which would later gave rise to all the different monkeys. They are therefore called proto-simians. The lemurs became isolated in Madagascar before this happened and, unlike everywhere else on the planet, were saved from extinction there. In this way, the lemurs followed their parallel evolution and adapted to the different habitats and plant foods of the island. Today, 33 species of lemur survive, so totally specialized that almost all depend on the bush and tree species on which they feed, which grow only in Madagascar. They could not, therefore, live anywhere else, even if they wanted to. With all the characteristics of a jungle-dwelling fruit-eating primate, including the most efficient brain on the planet, humans took gathering to limits never before reached by any animal. In the same way as these Australian Aborigines still do today, humans became great specialists, adapted to different types of food. So, if a given resource became scarce, this was immediately compensated for by the abundance of another. Memory and experience were gradually accumulated among human clans, which spread throughout the world thanks to their ability to gather not only vegetable foods, but also the energy reserves accumulated by other animals in the form of honey, wax or eggs. Progressive knowledge of the habits of other animals led the insatiable human gatherer to try virtually everything. With the discerning palate of the simians, man began to appreciate an increasing variety of foods and incorporated them into his culture as one more mark of identity. Again, the cultural progress of the human species happened so quickly that in just a few generations it had colonized virtually the entire planet. The human hunter-gatherer passed on increasingly efficient techniques to his children and grandchildren, and so an invaluable store of knowledge was accumulated. Our ancestors survived in this way for some two million years. Even today we can learn much if we are capable of interpreting the information contained in these prehistorical paintings and petroglyphs. But as our ancestors evolved, the climate continued to change and large areas of forest were progressively replaced by bush savanna at the edge of the desert. Then the groups of hominids had to cope with harsher conditions as still today occurs on the other side of the planet. These men are Bushmen or San, one of the few remaining groups of true hunter-gatherers still surviving in the 21st century. The Bushmen are interesting not only for their culture. Even physiologically, they are different from other human groups because they are adapted to the desert. Their dark yellowish skin has a wrinkled appearance due to the fact they do not have a subcutaneous fat. 
They are short with small teeth, eye folds and very curly hair. Only some 50,000 remain. But they still conserve most of the knowledge that has enabled them to survive for over 10,000 years in the Kalahari Desert. 80% of their diet is vegetable. They gather around 100 different species of roots, bulbs and nuts. Anthropological studies have demonstrated that this diet is surprisingly rich and complete and that it gives the Bushmen long life with almost no symptoms of anxiety or insecurity.